Hear a knock on the door and the night begins Cause we've done this before so you come on in Make yourself at my home, tell me where you been Let me tell you how it go and it's just like this Sometimes you gotta stay in And you know where I live Yeah, you know what we is Sometimes you gotta stay in Hey there Yellow Jackets, this is Kyle Tran with your morning announcements. If you are in need of tutoring, the YMCA Teen Achievers is there for you. They offer tutoring Monday through Thursday every week from 3 to 6 p.m. Visit room C254 for more information. The Visual Arts Department is hosting the very first opening gallery of the year. This will take place in Gallery 501. Join them today from 5 to 7 p.m. All are invited to this free event. They also have a scheduled lecture with the featured artists from 4 to 5 p.m. Attention NH NHS members, if you want to run for officer position, be sure to see Mr. Bernier in room C353 today. Now for some more announcements. Live from Studio 514, WBUZ presents Are You Smarter Than a Ninth Grader? Here's your host, Luke Sanders. Hey there, Yellow Jackets. I'm Luke Sanders, and this is Are You Smarter Than a Ninth Grader? The show where we find out who's smarter, the staff or the freshmen. Representing Blake's faculty is Mr. Dubai, and for the class of 2020, we have Diana. All right, since the Olympics just wrapped up, each question is going to be based on basic Olympic history. Are you guys ready? Sure. Yep. All right, here we go. Janet, your first question okay. is, where did the 2016 Olympics take place? Rio. Yes, okay. that is correct. Yeah. All right, and your first question is, where were the 1952 Summer Olympics held? <laughs> really? Because that's not... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's easy. Come on. That doesn't seem fair. Um, I believe I wasn't around yet. It was close to being born. Um, 1952 Olympics were in... Um, uh, Summer? Yeah. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. It was Helsinki, Finland. That was an easy one. Come on. All right. This next category is women's gymnastics. Okay. Your first question. I mean, your second question, but, you know. What women's gymnastic team won gold in 2016? USA. Yeah, really? Right. Good job. Okay, awesome. All right. And your question is, yeah. what women's gymnastic team won the bronze medal in the 1972 Summer Olympics? The bronze medal? Yeah, yeah. The bronze, yeah. Oh, that was um, Finland. That Finland. Uh, I'm sorry, it was Hungary. Close. They were, but close. they were hungry, though. Yeah, they were hungry for a win. Yeah. Or a loss. They came in third, though. Okay, the next category is going to be track and field. Whew, this is a tough game. Your question is which track athlete is the fastest man in the world? Usain Bolt. Okay. Uh, I didn't even need to give you a hint. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> Okay, and your question is, which track athlete received first place in the women's 3,000 meter steeplechase in this year's Summer Olympic? Hint, she's from Bahrain. She's from Bahrain? Yeah, yeah, come on. I didn't even know that was a country. Uh, something with a lot of vowels and a lot of consonants. Uh, that's other. not the answer we were looking for. It was Ruth Jebbett, you know, the 19 year old from Bahrain. Oh, the 19 yeah. year old, yeah. I never she's saw that. Oh, that didn't show up. All right, this is our NBC. final question. Yeah. And this category is Olympic history. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yep. Which Olympian has won the most overall gold medals? M Michael Phelps? Yeah. Why do your questions yeah. seem way easier than mine? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't make the game. Yeah, this game. All right. Thanks. Your Go question ahead. is, how many total medals has the United States won in its summer Olympic history? Hint, it's more than any other country. In the history of the Olympics? Yeah, the history. Well, we won 121 this year. Does that count? Because that seems pretty good Well, knowledge. that's not really the answer, uh, but... Probably, you I don't again? know, seven. No. It was 2,520. Come on. Okay. 
one. Everybody knows that one. Right, right, everyone knows that one. Except me. Yeah, except me. Well, that's it for our episode of Are You Smarter Than a Ninth Grader? Tune in next time to see other faculty get whooped by freshmen. Yeah, great. This is Luke Sanders signing off. Hey, Yellow Jackets, it's Maddie Glass from the WBUZ with Ms. Matos on some SJ updates. Hey, y'all, welcome back to a new year. Um, in the next few weeks, we have a few things going on. First, we have our tailgate. It's going to be our um, second home game of the year. It's on September 9th. What's going to happen is you're going to get food, entertainment, and a ticket to the game, and you get to hang out for about two or three hours in the cafeteria, um, play, eat, have lots of fun, um, and then everybody moves over to the football game, trying to get our school spirit up. Um, secondly, we have homecoming coming up. Yay! It's on September 17th. It's going to be at the zoo. It's going to be super nice. Tickets are still $50. We have the them um, on sale we only have 800 tickets so you got to get them real quick um, and if you would like to run for court or anything like that applications start on October no excuse me um, August 22nd um, and they run for about a week to get all that information in um, you can pick up an application or turn them in right here to the SGA wall which is outside of my room and B116 and we're hoping to have a great year if anybody has any um, ideas for any SGA you can come see myself again in B116 or any SGA member to help get our school spirit up, community service, getting Blake in a good place. Thank you, Ms. Matos. There are many high school students who are truly devoted to meeting high expectations and realizing their dreams. However, there are often changes in circumstance that make their journey more difficult. This is the case for Blake's ROTC Corps Commander, Sam Rourke. Sam was working on getting his pilot's license and playing hockey in his free time. Acting as a leader both in and out of the classroom, Sam was an inspiration to his peers. I've been flying since I was 14, and I'm almost 18 now. So I was obviously pretty invested, considering I put uh, you know, multiple years into it. One night, early in 2016, Sam began experiencing sharp pains in his chest. After a visit to the ER, it was determined that he had sustained a spontaneous pneumothorax. In my head, you know, I'm too young to go to the hospital, I'm too young to be having a heart attack, I'm too young to this, too young to that. And um, I actually, I did think I was having a heart attack, but I was like, you know, that, that 17 year old ego is just tapping right here saying, you know, you're not, you're not that hurt, you can suck it up, man up. A pneumothorax is the actual medical term for a collapsed lung. For some reason, sometimes it's an accident, sometimes it's related to having pneumonia or um, bad asthma, terrible coughing. The um, air gets caught in between your lung and your pleura, which is the, the wall of your lungs, and um, fills up the space, which causes your lung to collapse. Really, it was, it was kind of shocking when the, when the surgeon came in and told me that I wouldn't be able to fly ever again and it was, it was pretty heartbreaking. Um, somebody that, that, that's saying I can't fly for the rest of my life or it'd even be risky for me to go in passenger planes at a higher altitude because of the pressure change, that was just heartbreaking for me. However, Sam wasn't willing to give up the things he loved. Despite his lungs hindering his performance, Sam still plays hockey with his friends in his free time and he is able to fly planes again. I am thankful that I'm doing better now, and it's, um, it's made me a better person, really. Sam's story is just one of many about fighting through difficulties we encounter in our lives. His experience is proof that there will always be a way for things to work out in the end. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to let you know we are going to begin offering yellow jacket tutoring after school on Wednesdays and Thursdays. The first session will be on Wednesday, September 7th. If you are having trouble in any classes or you want to make sure you don't get behind, please take one of these forms. They're available in the media center, the front office, guidance, and the student affairs office, as well as your teachers have some copies of them. Fill it out, return it to me in the media center. Uh, this is for everyone who needs extra help. And again, it's Wednesdays and Thursdays after school from 315 till 515. 
If you are a zoned student, meaning you uh, take a bus to school from the neighborhood, then you will be uh, eligible for a bus ride after ELP. So please let me know and bring your completed form back to the Media Center. That's most important. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Ms. Savard. Hey there, Yellow Jackets. This is Vashon Gotten with your sports announcements. Our volleyball team had a close game last night against Brendan High School. There is a varsity football game tonight. The game is at Robinson High School and kickoff is at 7 o'clock p.m. That's all for your sports. Here are more announcements. Hey, yo, bro, let me get a piece. Hey, bro, let me get a piece. Let me get a piece, bro. Sorry, I don't have any more. As the new school year rolls around, school sports teams are beginning to prep for the upcoming season. The Lady Yellow Jackets are working hard for the first volleyball game of the year preparing for competition with this year's well-rounded team captain, Brianna Miller. It's harder than a normal person's schedule because they may not have like a lot on their plate, but with me, I have like a job, then I have to balance um, my friends, then I have to worry about volleyball, then I have to worry about being a shady game. Not only is Brianna a great captain, but a great student too, being involved with student government along with sports. Well, this year she's student government president. She shows the utmost um, responsibility, respect. She's a great student leader. She's one of the best students I've had. While balancing it all, Brianna stays positive, always making time for her friends, family, and extracurricular activities. I feel like she's the perfect person to be captain because she's friendly, she knows everyone, and she really brings us all together. She's a great leader. She's in the UTA program. She's an SGA, national volleyball captain. She's a natural leader, and I feel like just throughout the season, she's going to lead our team to do really good things. Through it all, Brianna is a great athlete and a fantastic leader, and she's ready to lead this year's Lady Yellow Jackets to victory. For WBUZ, I'm Bella Macchia. Do you think that the Yellow Jackets are ready for this season? Oh, yeah. We, we're going to take that dub. I don't know how to put it, but we're going to take the dub. <laughs> Hi, I'm Patrick Keene. Hi, I'm Demetrius Ball. And I'm Shane Theobald, and today we're going to see who can use the better pickup lines. Either me, Pat, or Demetrius. Because I know how to do it. Because I'm a player. No, I think, but I think I'm, I'm a player. I'm a player. I'm I always better. use my pickup lines. I'm a better player, though. No. You a no, player, but I'm a better player. I'm, I'm, I'm pimp P. I'm pimp P. No, how you pimp P? How you pimp P? Hey, you, hey, you look beautiful today. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think me and you should talk. About, uh, I don't know, we like should be like going on a date or something. I don't know how to respond to that. How? You don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> um, okay, I'll think about it. You'll think about it? Okay. Red. Hey, Patrick. Violets are blue. You're so stupid. I think me and you should be on a date, too. <laughs> You're trying to talk to You got a boyfriend? Oh, no, you do? Quick question. You got a boyfriend? No. Yes, she does. She does? She's lying. 
I don't. I no, she ain't lying. You want to go out some time? She's not a boyfriend. You want to go out some time? She's lying. You want to go out some time? You so fine. You blew my mind. Now, can I take you out on a date? Hi, I'm Brianna Miller. I'm you guys' SGA president. Um, homecoming is coming up. It's September 17th. Um, if you're really, if you want to run for homecoming court, you should come on down to B116. Grab your homecoming court papers, get it signed and filled out, and you can run for homecoming court. Thank you. Answer my question, please. Hi, I'm Vashon. And this week we're going around school asking people how was their first week of school and can they give me their best Rick Ross impression? Oh, Alright, so how you enjoying your first month at school so far? Man, they jump born, bro. How you enjoying your first month at school? I'm enjoying it good. This is, this is trifling, okay? School shouldn't have started on August 10th. It should start August 23rd like it was supposed to. It's going stupendous. It's amazing. I'm glad I'm here for the second year again. Give me your best Rick Ross impression. I don't know what that is. Oh. Give me your best Rick Ross impression. Dice pineapples, made back music, huh? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Huh? <laughs> Give me a Big Mac, double chicken, hot sauce. Make sure to tune in next time to see what questions I ask and what answers I'll be given on. Answer my question, please. Yellow Jackets, this Saturday we're having a Blake Beautification Day. You can earn community service hours that are good for bright futures and other scholarships. Please come out this Saturday at 8 a.m. to receive community service hours and make Blake beautiful. Welcome to At The Cinema, the show where we discuss the art of motion pictures. I'm your host, Grayson Richmond. <laughs> Today, we will be discussing the latest films currently in theaters, and I give my humble opinions on them. This week's new films include Kubo and the Two Strings, the latest feature from Like Animation, and the latest adaptation of Ben-Hur, starring Morgan Freeman and Jack Houston. <laughs> Kubo and the Two Strings is a story about a young boy who accidentally reawakens a spirit from his family's past. Alongside his friends Monkey, voiced by Charlize Theron, and Beetle, voiced by Matthew McConaughey, and armed with a magical guitar, he must make a journey to find a series of ancient relics and save his world from certain doom. The film itself is full of lush, beautiful visuals and a creative story. The film treats its audience with a level of maturity lacking in even the best of Disney's productions. Like animation is known for such features as Coraline, Paranorman and the Box Trolls. They are true stop-motion gurus of our time. And I consider Kubo and the Two Strings to be their greatest feat to this date. The plot is smart, the characters endearing, and the story is truly awe-inspiring. I would highly recommend this movie to anyone with even a passing interest in cinema or the arts in general. And if you still are not interested, go anyway, it's a masterpiece. Ben Hur. Much in the same way this summer's Suicide Squad made me want to drink bleach, I think I would much rather be crucified than have to sit through this adaptation of Ben Hur again. The acting was dreadful and the script laughable. One can clearly see Morgan Freeman was not putting forth any effort. Even the promise of any sort of fun action is met with a vomit inducing chariot sequence that feels more at home in a mid 2000s direct to DVD movie. It's terrible. Don't see it. Go see Kubo instead. No! 